Just stop and imagine earning a whopping $108 million in your career, but then the unimaginable happens and you'll lose it all. The year is 2008 and Antoine Walker just retired after a 13 year career in the NBA. And in that time, he earned a massive $108 million. Now that's a lot of money for any person without question. But here's the problem, two years later, he had lost everything. In an unfortunate turn of events in 2010, he declared bankruptcy. This is certainly an incredible story and you're gonna wanna stay until the very end to see how it all turned out. I came into the league at 19 years old, he said. I came from humble beginnings, so I was not used to having money at all. When he started making money, he didn't understand the concept of a dollar, he said. This is definitely not his fault or anyone's fault for that matter, as no one is taught in school about the importance of money. He also picked up some aggressive spending habits, spending on cars, clothes and jewelry, as well as helping family and friends. Now, this is the problem with getting a windfall payment and something I talked about in my previous video about why millionaires are afraid to leave their wealth to their children, which you can watch here right after this video, where you get a big chunk of money right away, such as with lottery winners, sports athletes, or even getting an inheritance. Having more money won't make you smarter with money. More money will just exasperate your financial illiteracy. In order to be smarter with money, you have to know the rules of money before the money shows up. When you get a lot of money, what do you instinctively think of as the First thing, what can I spend this money on? You don't think about, oh, I should invest this money first and live off the profits of my investments. Alas, no one teaches you that. But luckily for you, you are watching this channel and you know what to do. So hit that subscribe button for more smarter content just like this. The rest of his money was lost in real estate investing when the market tanked after the Great Recession. Stop, stop, stop. You should definitely not sell a good investment when it's going down. Think of it this way. Why did you invest in something in the first place? Because you thought and felt positive that it was a good investment. So if an investment goes down, but you are confident in the decision you originally made, you shouldn't have to sell. And rule number two, never sell in a down market. This is where you should be buying more assets and not selling. This is why 90% of traders lose money as they do the opposite of what they should be doing. That led him to declare bankruptcy in 2010. Two and a half years later, he had bounced back. Good for him, that's awesome. You're allowed to make mistakes. It is how you react afterwards that dictates what your success will be. Today, he helps others avoid the money issues he's overcome. He's a consultant with EduCore, a financial financial literacy company that focuses on teaching athletes how to manage their money. If you are faced with the loss of either your home, your car, or garnishment, any of those events is an emergency and it could make sense to file bankruptcy immediately. So if there's going to be a dramatic change to your lifestyle, such as losing your house, the recommendation here is to file bankruptcy. Beyond an emergency, it makes sense to file if you have an overwhelming amount of debt that you won't be able to repay and that it's peaked, meaning that you're not still incurring more debt. Generally, in this case, it makes sense to already be working your way out of debt. For me personally, bankruptcy should be the absolute last thing you do to try to get out of debt. Yes, everyone's situations are different and there are very extreme cases where the basic steps to try to get out of debt are so far reaching. But before bankruptcy, you have to try to cut your expenses as much as you can. Try to create more income for yourself and especially reduce the amount of interest you are paying on those debts. If you don't see your financial situation improving after bankruptcy, it's not a good time to file, said Robert Lawless, a professor at the University of Illinois College of Law. Bankruptcy won't put money in your pocket. It forgives past debts. Here is the thing about bankruptcy. It will help you forgive past mistakes, but that doesn't mean you are still allowed to behave the same way you were before. Your entire mindset towards money, investing, saving, spending, expenses, income, all that has to change. Otherwise, guess what? You're gonna go right back to where you were before. We have two types of bankruptcy plans for consumers in the US, chapter seven versus chapter 13 bankruptcy. Before I go on, see how this article is talking about the word consumers. We as a society really do have a consumption problem. There is just too much debt, too much borrowing, and you know what the problem is? It has been made to look normal. Oh, if you can't afford it, just put it on credit. At the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, do I want to actually be wealthy or look wealthy to people that don't even care about me. Walker was able to file for chapter seven bankruptcy, he said, which is also referred to as a liquidation or straight bankruptcy. In this process, all unsecured debt, think personal loans, credit cards, and some medical expenses is wiped away. But a court will take possession of your assets such as property, a court appointed trustee will handle your case and may sell some of your assets to cover your debts. So here are the things about chapter seven. Your unsecured debt is taken away, but your assets are liable to be 
taken possession of. In Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you generally get to keep ownership of your assets and get a more affordable payment plan from your creditors. However, you must fit certain requirements. You need to have enough income to afford your monthly payments and your debt must be under a certain amount. The limits for Chapter 13 bankruptcy in 2020 were nearly $420,000 in unsecured debt and roughly $1.25 million in secured debt. So again, I don't want you to ever reach this point where you're trying to figure out whether Chapter 7 or 13 is best for you. Let's work on making sure starting today that you start moving the needle on your debt the other way and never have to go down this road. Walker put it this way, you are the CEO of your company. He said, you have to take responsibility of what you do and you have to be on top of it. Look, I say it right on my wall here in my five secrets to becoming wealthy. Number one, know your numbers. You gotta be on top of your income and especially your expenses because that is where the boat is going to leak the most. Trust me, if I walk up to you on the street and ask you, what is your current income? The sources of your income your expenses and all sources of your expenses and you say, I have no idea, there is a problem because how do you expect to get wealthy if you don't even know where you stand right now? An important part is having a workable budget and sticking to it. According to Lawless, in addition, after bankruptcy, people should be cautious about taking on more debt. While it's important to rebuild credit, it should be done carefully. Ah, my favorite word, budget. Folks, it's critical to set a budget and stick to it. When you get more money, people automatically increase their lifestyle. It's so tempting, but don't stop and take a step back. Making more money only means you now have more money to do two important things. Pay down any outstanding debts, and secondly, put that surplus into investments. Your lifestyle should not outpace your income. Your income should far outpace your lifestyle. For Walker, rebuilding also meant accepting that his life might look different than it did when he was in the NBA. I may never again make $108 million, but I can have a comfortable lifestyle, he said. That's been my mindset as I got back on my feet. So true in such smart words, because at the end of the day, that peace of mind is worth all the wealth in the world. Not stressing about bills and debts and payments, if you can create a lifestyle of contentment, that beats any material thing this world can ever offer. The great thing though, is that two and a half years later, he bounced back. And that's why you need to watch this next video here right now, is it's gonna teach you how to keep more of your money in your own pocket and truly be wealthy.